Name five careers that you would say are the five careers you would most love to have. I don't know if this is going to be the answer for everybody to that dilemma of like, I don't want to, I don't want to have a day job or I don't want to give up the dream or what does giving up the dream really look like? So when I, I got sober and then I was gainfully unemployed. Actually, the, the way that I got sober was the band that I was in, that was, it was the band that got the furthest, you know, Japan and all over Europe and our second record was about to come out and then the band broke up. The lead singer kind of just said, I'm out of here and disappeared into the woods. And the record company was like, where's your lead singer? And we're like, I don't know. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, so they're like, all right, we're not gonna put out the record because you can't tour behind it without a singer. So. Um, anyway, that was the end of my uh, drinking and using was I just like went right down the tubes. And when I started my sobriety, I couldn't get out of bed. I just, you know, like the way I stayed sober mostly was like crawling to 12 step meetings and like spending the rest of the time, you know, staring at my navel and not going outside because outside had stuff that might hurt me. And I even got a couple of phone calls from people who were like, hey, you want to play on my record or join my band? And I was like, no, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. And, but I did take care of myself. I did do what I needed to do to get healthy because I was unhealthy, you know, in addition to being disappointed, I was very unhealthy. So I got my health back and then I went through a process of, I actually did like career counseling um, from the perspective of having this, um, you know, sort of the, the disability of alcoholism and drug addiction. So I went through that and that's how I ended up becoming a high school English teacher. And through, but the process was, is the first question that, actually this is, this is a good one, is the, the first question that they asked in this career counseling was, name five careers that you would say are the five careers you would most love to have and forget that you're a whatever age you are, whatever gender you are, whatever millennium this is. Like if Queen Elizabeth, if that's the gig that you would dream of, then write it down. So when started at like the level of pure just fantasy, theoretically. And so I, I still remember what I wrote down. I wrote down center fielder for the Yankees, wasn't gonna happen. Um, center for the Knicks, even funnier, the height challenges are very important. Um, rock star, I kept that just generic, just rock star. Um, then I used slashes to get a couple of extra in and it was like novelist filmmaker. And then the last one was civil rights worker in the 60s. So that was my list. And eventually, so I went, I became a high school English teacher um, because I actually told them, I said, please don't make me have like a creative job. Like that's where I was at the time. I was like, I don't want to, I just, I don't want the heartbreak anymore. And I want some structure, but I want to be doing something meaningful. And that's high school English teacher seemed to cover it. So. I became a high school English teacher and one year into my teaching, there were riots, race riots in the neighborhood where I was teaching. So I end up sort of on the fly, start teaching what I know about the civil rights era to my students. And then they're like, oh, there's this teacher down the hall and they're doing the same thing. And they pulled me into their office. And they're like, do you wanna help? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. And I ended up on this journey where I basically was sort of educating people about those issues for the next 15 years, right? So again, you know, I, I'm not like, I'm not one of those, I'm not, you know, into the secret, let's say, you know, the, the law of attraction in, in that way, but I am into the idea of abundance I know that's almost the same thing, but it, that, that my getting something doesn't take away from you. That the, and, that, and that if I give, it, it will come back to me, whatever that's gonna look like. So, and then, you know, like I, I did that for, uh, taught in that school for three years. And then I went on a soul searching trip and I was like, you know what, I'm, I, at the time I was turning 30 and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna give the art life one more chance. And then I go back and I end up, you know, writing for magazines, playing in a band, the band gets signed. You know, I end up touring in a bus instead of a van, you know, like, and being creative and having 
I don't think I would have gotten there without that. Some people would call it a detour, but I call it, you know, a, you know, my particular path. So especially like young entrepreneurs and like in, in the way it is now, I remember back, you know, it was really, you know, like I can't remember what year Justin Bieber arrives, but he was like, you know, 13 years old or whatever it was. It used to be we used to, you know, back in my day, you know, you'd be, you know, like 24, let's say, and you'd be like, oh, I'm over the hill. You know, now kids are like, you know, in entertainment, they're like 15 and they're like, oh man, I'm too old, right? And then that bleeds into this world, you know, sort of, you know, Silicon Valley startup, you know, all of it, like people very young hitting heights, very young. And so I think a lot of it has to do, and I saw, I, I saw it in, around me in the punk rock scene, you know, when I was, I was 16 years old when I started playing CBGBs and I was surrounded by some people my age and some people a little older. And we all, we were, I, I don't know, I'll speak for myself. I was a little bit emotionally immature and not ready to take care of myself in that. And I didn't become like uber famous. Some of the people around me did, and it didn't have a good effect on them or if, if they weren't ready for it. So I think it's the same in the startup world. It's kind of like do whatever you can to stay in some kind of, for, and I'm not, I'll just use this term because I can't think of another, some kind of spiritual, um, I'm not gonna say belief because that's not what it is. Just like acknowledge that it's that uh, we're a, a um, spiritual being living in a human body kind of a deal. And that, you know, the success is just a, um, it's a gift that you got and that you then gave. And if it's not necessary anymore, or if it's just so big that you don't have to do anything anymore, and, but then you, you kind of implode because what's the meaning of life? You know, I conquered the world with my thing. Um, yeah, just no, whether you're that person or the person who hasn't been able to get anything started up or doesn't even have that idea, you know, you both have, Everyone has the opportunity somehow to find, you know, the the capital T truth inside and inside the, everything that we're talking about. You know, it's sort of like, uh, you know, it's like a it's like a show. You know, it's like we're all we're all in this uh, play, and behind the play is the meaning, and each of us has that inside. Um, so yeah, it's seeing, it's seeing oneself on a path instead of heading towards, rocketing towards this destination. You know, it's like when people get into, I guess the last way I can put it is another Buddhist formulation is, you know, the three poisons, greed, hatred, and delusion, right? So, you know, greed is not all about like money, 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 or Wall Street level greed, or, you know, startup, you know, gets a gajillion dollars in a, in a, in a, um, on the market. It's, um, it's the little things. Like, you know, right now I'm starting to think about ice cream, right? And, but if I take it a little further, it's like ice, you know, ice cream. Um, hatred is, you know, it's also the other um, translations are aversion or, you know, anger, right? So um, if I live, you know, I'm, I'm averse to not being famous or I'm uh, averse to uh, this new world that I've created either through my success or my failure, that's what's killing me, not the success or the failure. And the delusion is that any of this is going to make me happy in the first place. So it's this endless sort of, you know, that's the second truth of the Four Noble Truths is the cause of all our suffering is craving, clinging, and aversion, and unhealthy attachment. So if that's how I'm rolling, you know, whether I'm making $28 million overnight, or whether I'm, you know, uh, a YouTube sensation, or whether, you know, whatever it is, the delusion is, is that that's happiness, and it's not. It's the results of craving and clinging. And again, this is not like judgmental. It's not a moral judgment. It's just the truth. Or at least that's the way Buddha understood it. And that's kind of how I 
kind of understand it. And so the answer to the suffering ending is not by getting more money or starting another startup or, or you know, it's from ending craving and clinging. How do you do that? Buddha said Eightfold Path. A lot of that was meditation, but it was also speaking right, acting right, and having right livelihood. One of the eight factors of the Eightfold Path is right livelihood, wise livelihood. So that's another way of framing it. Am I being helpful or harmful with what I'm doing?